An eyeball, covered by a red nose sign, spins into view. White text on a black background reads, Mason in the Dark. A blind man's journey through the wacky world of reading, writing, and other silly bollocks. Brought to you from beyond the black screen. Cut to black. Hello everyone. Mason here. How you doing? I've been extremely busy recently, and I haven't recorded a video in a while, which means it's high time for an update. To kick things off, I'm pleased to announce Black Screen Audio Productions Equality, Accessibility, Entertainment Storytelling should be universal That's right, you wanted it, and now you're getting it For a while now people have been suggesting that I try my hand at voiceover work Well, now I am I'm pleased to announce that moving forward, I'll be offering my services as a freelance narrator. You have stories to tell. People need to hear them. And I want to help make that happen. If you are a disabled or independent author who wants to produce an audiobook but can't, for whatever reason that might be, I'm your guy. I want to help bring your story to life and I'll be passionate about your project. So, if you're interested, you can get in touch via masonad.author at gmail.com. I'll leave that in the description. That's not all though. Oh no. Because Black Screen Audio Productions already has its first commission. A while back I reviewed a short story called The Last Dive by Katarina Prater. I'm equally pleased and proud to announce that not only will I be the voice of The Last Dive, but also Katarina's entire short story anthology, Monsters Within. If you'd like to know more, Katarina has an announcement video on her channel that I'll link in the description. Honestly, if you're not aware of Katarina, you absolutely should be. Not only is she a lovely person, but also a talented author and a fantastic creator. I'm not kidding or exaggerating when I say that I am pumped to be narrating this anthology. Going into this project, I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to feel about narrating other people's work, but so far I've produced two stories and although it's very challenging, it's also genuinely fun. When I narrate my own writing, as the author, I go in with a comprehensive understanding of everything involved. But that's not the case when it's not my work. The way I see it, there's more to narration than just reading words off a page. If you want your audience to be truly invested in and engaged with your story, the narrator needs to understand it. My favourite part of working on this project with Katarina is the deep dive, learning the context and motivations behind the creation of the story, Understanding the themes that are being explored, the pacing, the tone, the characterizations, knowing when to be big and bombastic, or gentle and heartfelt. My job is to comprehend what Katarina wants from the story, what she's trying to communicate, and how she wants the audience to feel. It's identifying what I can do to bring her vision to life, and I really enjoy that. Of course, as well as narrating Monsters Within, I've been hard at work on The Bleeding Ground. The thing is, the more work I put into The Bleeding Ground as a project, the more I care about it, which makes my perfectionism even worse. I found Volume 8 quite challenging, and I thought that the next volume might be slightly easier. It wasn't. Which... Leads me to my next announcement. I know, another one. Oh, how I spoil you. I didn't just write one volume. I wrote two, or more specifically, I wrote a two-parter. So, the next time I upload The Bleeding Ground, you'll be getting The Last Free Town, part one and two which I'll release fairly close together, but I'm not going to give you a time frame because I don't want to commit to anything and then go back on my plans. I think more than any other volumes, 
the last three town parts 1 and 2 were subject to the most extensive rewrites. Now, that's partly my fault, because recently I've done a lot of internalised world building and I was trying to crowbar my knowledge into the story, which, for future reference, Mason, is a mistake, don't do it. You see, I can get around the whole I don't feel comfortable giving advice thing by advising my future self, not you. Clever. I came up with a setting that I was eager to use and I was trying desperately to cram it in. It wasn't working. It just wasn't working. It wasn't working. And finally I decided, forget it. The irony of that scenario is I decided not to use that setting and filed it away for later use. Then I moved on, the story went through a bunch of different drafts and in the end, I used the setting anyway. The thing is, by the time I reached that final draft, the setting in question was actually cohesive with the story, so no crowbar required. I think another reason I struggled is that at this point in the series, the plot is gaining momentum and the stakes are being raised. Due to the nature of how The Bleeding Ground is being released, volume by volume, there's an internalised continuity that I have to follow. I need to be completely sure of what I'm doing because there's no finishing the series and then going back to fix plot holes or tie up loose ends. I get nervous about moving forward because I don't want to take a step in the wrong direction, regret it and then have no way to undo it. Sometimes I feel a lot of pressure, which in all fairness is self-imposed, but the series is important to me and I want to do it justice. Yes, occasionally it's hard work and I get stressed, but I just have to remind myself that it always works out in the end. It always works out in the end, Mason. Remember that. Between the narration for Monsters Within and writing the Bleeding Ground, I've been a busy, busy man over the last month or so, which I don't mind because somehow I've become a workaholic. However, last week, I actually took some time off. For a full seven days I could actually go to sleep without my mind screaming at me about what I'm going to work on tomorrow. It was absolutely fabulous. Yeah, you probably want to hear about what I've been reading now, don't you? Unfortunately, the answer is nothing. There are three reasons why I haven't picked up a book recently. The first is, I haven't been able to find anything that interests me. The second is that when I do find something that interests me, half the time I don't like the narrator. The third is, that because I'm so, so busy doing such important work, occasionally I just want to switch my brain off. To be honest, I've been more in the mood for TV recently, which is fine because it's media, it's storytelling, and it's all interchangeable. At least that's what I tell myself. Okay, a few days have passed since I said that last thing, and I actually have read something now. It was Love at First Psych by Cara Bastone. The fourth book in the Audible original Love Line series follows Robbie, played by Santino Fontana, and Marigold, played by Stephanie Einstein, as they tackle a group project in their college psych class. The psychology of love. <laughs> their assignment is to interview a bunch of different couples about their relationships to investigate whether or not love at first sight is a thing. I'm not going to lie, I really, really enjoyed this one. At just four hours long, it was short and sweet, it was super cute, and it made me feel good. I quite like Cora Bastone's writing. I see a lot of similarities in the way that we tackle character development, and she writes romance the way I would love to. To be honest, I feel represented because all the guys in this series are just a bit... goofy. I like that they don't have to be super stereotypically masculine all the time. The thing I enjoyed most about this one is that the nature of Robbie and Marigold's assignment allows Bastone to explore the themes of love in terms of how and why it forms, the different ways in which it manifests and what it looks like in the long term. I also love that it's exclusively dialogue. 
It's just four hours of these two characters interacting, and because they're exploring the nature of love, they have a valid excuse to have the type of deep conversation that leads to genuine connection. They might not have been my favourite couple in the series, but the characters are likeable, they have a dynamic chemistry, and they allow Bastone to vocalise some beautifully poignant ideas that really resonated with me. I only have one complaint, which is a formatting and production issue. For the most part, I genuinely enjoyed the production on this series. It's almost entirely character driven, there's lots of dialogue, and you get the immersive backgrounds that make it feel more like an audio drama than your traditional book. However, this time around, the gimmick didn't really work for me. In theory, it's presented as if Robbie and Marigold are recording the interviews they're conducting. The scenes tend to start with one of them switching on their microphone and testing the audio. But it doesn't really make sense. Sometimes it just feels a bit inconsistent and I struggle to suspend my disbelief. For the most part, it's presented as if they just forget to stop recording but there's at least a few scene transitions that I can think of where it cuts out and then restarts for no reason whatsoever. There's also at least a few times I can think of where they just would have switched it off. I tried to ignore it and tell myself that it wasn't their recordings that we were hearing, but then later on it was made perfectly clear that it was, which was frustrating. Whatever though, yeah, it damaged my ability to fully immerse myself, but only because I'm a picky bastard. In terms of the overall plot, it's really not that big of a deal. I'd say if you've got a few hours to kill and you're looking for a low stakes, easy listening, feel good story, this is a good choice. I strongly recommend it. Ooh, switching gears, I tell you what I did listen to last week. Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. I watched a 2014 recording of the production which featured Bryn Tavell as Sweeney and oh fucking hell it scared the shit out of me. Jesus. <laughs> oh god. I watched a 2014 recording of the production which featured Bryn Tavell as Sweeney and Emma Thompson as Mrs Lovett. Sweeney is a barber and people get put in pies. That was the extent of my knowledge going into this, and I still wasn't prepared for how bloody dark this show is. It's so good though. I loved it. Sweeney was super intimidating thanks to Bryn Tavell's bass baritone, and Emma Thompson as Mrs Lovett was... well, she's Emma Thompson. Obviously it was great. The songs are dark and morbid, and yet somehow they get stuck in your head. For days, for days, I was wandering around my flat going, Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. It's grim, atmospheric, and awesome. This show has shot right to the top of my priority list. I need to see this live. Speaking of Emma Thompson, I also watched Matilda the Musical. Honestly, I like it more than the old movie. It has a genuinely charming vibe and the songs are really good. Alicia Weir as Matilda brings so much to the role. She's almost unbearably adorable. And Emma Thompson as Mrs Trunchbull was... terrifying. I love that they were brave enough to take their own direction with it and I think they nailed it. I honestly don't think I'll ever watch the old version again now. I also watched Black Mirror Season 6, but... Despite originally planning to, I don't think I'm going to dedicate a video to it, because my take seems to be roughly the same as everyone else's. Overall, I quite enjoyed the series. Joan is Awful was a fun, metafictional comedy that explored some really interesting concepts, and just like everyone else, I was pleasantly surprised that they were allowed to take so many vicious shots at Netflix. The scenes with the lawyers were particularly entertaining, and to be honest, it was probably the best execution of the you didn't read the terms and conditions trope I've ever seen. 
As you would expect, I was super into the thriller vibe of Lock Henry, and as well as telling a compelling story, it also raised some pretty valid points about the true crime murder documentary genre. Beyond the Sea was a really strong episode with a hard sci-fi concept, and I was gripped by it. To be honest, it was the only episode of the series to give me that sense of dread, which is what I expect from Black Mirror. It was one of those where you know something in particular is going to happen pretty much from the very beginning, and you're just waiting for it. Then, when it does, it just spirals into darkness. As for Maisie Day and Demon79, they were entertaining stories that I actually quite enjoyed, but they do mark a departure from the traditional Black Mirror dynamic that I'm not entirely on board with. If they belonged to another anthology series, I'd be doing nothing but singing their praises, but they make me nervous for the future of the show. I can't specifically tackle why, because they are good episodes and I don't want to spoil them for you, but Black Mirror is one thing and those two episodes are not. On one hand, I love this show and I don't want it to change. On the other hand, I don't want to be one of those people who refuses to accept that long-running TV shows have to evolve and change over time to stay fresh and exciting. If exploring new directions is what Charlie Brooker needs to do to stop Black Mirror from feeling stale, then he can do whatever he wants, it's his show. In future, I can either decide to watch or not watch, it's pretty simple. I'll still watch no matter what he does. Here's my question of the day. Would you rather have a neural implant that allowed you to download any knowledge or skill directly to your brain, but granting the government and evil corporations access to your thoughts and memories, or not have that and be the only person in the world who doesn't? Have you enjoyed this video? If so, the like and subscribe buttons are just sitting there, waiting to be pressed. And if you don't press at least one of them, the next thing you put in your mouth will transform into a massive blob of earwax. That's, um, that's really gross. If you've got thoughts to share or you fancy a chat, then you know where the comment section is and the links to all my social media can be found in the description. Thanks ever so much for spending time with me today, guys. Until next time, take care. For now, I'm off, and you should have a good one.